where are the rites of passage? Like, what are the things mm. that are preparing our adults of today to take mm. their place of power in the community? Like, these are the gifts I have. This is my place mm. um, in relation to my parents, in relation um, mm. to my community and my purpose. Welcome to the Relational Parenting Podcast. I'm Jennifer Hayes, a parent coach and 20-year child care veteran. Each week, I sit down with my own father, Rick Hayes, and discuss the complicated issues that parents face today, as well as some of the oldest questions in the book. From the latest research and the framework of my relational parenting method, we offer thought-provoking solutions to your deepest parenting struggles. Added bonuses include intergenerational wounding discussions and guest childcare experts. We will also start taking your parenting questions in episode five. So be sure to comment with your biggest questions or email me directly at jenny at jennyb.co. Let's get started. Kat Tweedy, PhD, is a social entrepreneur, facilitator, and passionate experimenter in support of collective wellness. She's a co-founder of Sleep Awake Camp, a 30-day immersive rite of passage for 18 to 27-year-olds. Mother of two and long-term meditator, Kat works to support our capacity to meet the challenges of our time. I can start there and I can I can weave it in. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the three things that I spend creative energy on are my, my own parenting of my two sons and my sculpture work. And then the work that I do with Sleep Awake Camp, which is a 30-day immersive camp for 18 to 27-year-olds. And we'll, we'll get more into that. But oh boy, um, that sounds interesting. It is interesting. Uh, but the sculpture that I'm working on right now that's just like taking over my garage is I've got 127 small bronze bodies laying in my garage anywhere from like this tall to this tall. <laughs> and I'm doing a sculpture um, that's to me, like super profound. It's called Seven Generations and it has one woman held by the two parents, Mm. held by the four grandparents, held by the eight great grandparents, Mm. the 16, the 32 and the 60 and the 64. Um, And so you like visually see like it took 127 beings the crowd meeting, it takes to do yeah, that. meeting yeah. the challenge of their time to make one wow. you know to make you know and i think it's a it's going in the city that i live in two blocks from where my kids go to school so that is very meaningful to me i will very see it cool. every day um and i'm really excited because once it's installed we get to have a community discussion about it and the the heart of it is you know it's both recognizing everything that we're given you know, from all the previous generations. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's also a reflection of like, okay, there have been, you know, indigenous populations that have planned seven generations in advance, like how making decisions Mm. today for, for that, you know, thinking 200 years ahead, Mm -hmm. like how, how will their lives be affected? And um, future generations, neat. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's looking in both those directions and, um, yeah, it's meaningful to me to be connecting my artwork and uh, kind of my my heart with my community. Very I nice. love putting that. a vibe yeah. out in the world that gets people thinking in a in a more in a more uh, healthy way. That's cool. I like that yeah, a lot. Thank you. Well, I'm thinking ahead, yeah, and it's at, yeah. Thinking, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, in thinking forward, like the two, you know, thinking ahead is that's such a parental thing. You know, how are my grandchildren's grandchildren going to get along? And what am I doing today to make their lives better? Yeah. Yeah. And even even just the like those daily moments where it's like, okay, I could I could give in on this boundary. Like, what does that actually mean for my child's life? Like, what what is he actually learning in this moment? If I if I'm role modeling you know, whatever I'm role modeling. And, yeah. um, so yeah, I, f- I forget there was a beautiful, oh yeah, there's this beautiful quote from one of my teachers named Patrick. And he said, discipline is, um, trading what you want right now for what you want most. Yep. I just heard that quote this morning. Uh, in- wow. Like in, um, I'm watching the show. This is so random. 
I'm watching oh. the show um, Call the Midwife on Netflix yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. That's and, a good show. The British nurses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one yeah. of the girls who is, she's young and she gave birth to her baby who's going up for adoption. Um, after she gives birth, you know, the moment comes for her to change her mind. And she says, if I change my mind now, I would be choosing what I want now versus what's mm. best for him and me for the future. And it's just, it's, it was, I mean, just, I literally watched like 15 mm. minutes of an episode this morning and it's just absolutely <laughs> serendipitous yeah. that I heard that quote and you brought that up. And that's mm. hard. Those kinds of decisions, making, yeah. taking a long view. Sometimes yeah. those are tough decisions in the moment. Yeah. You and know. I, you know, I feel like that's part of what underpins the camp, which, which is, you know, a good friend of mine who I went to MIT with like 23 years ago. Um, he and I in the last like 15 years been like, where are the rites of passage? Like, what are the things mm. that are preparing our adults of today to take their hmm. place of power in the community. Like these are the gifts I have. This is my place mm. um, in relation to my parents, in relation um, mm. to my community and my purpose. And, you know, so after talking for a bunch of years about that, that doesn't exist um, so much in our modern kind of arc of things, especially we yeah. see the opposite, right? More and more like 33 year olds living at home with their parents. Yeah. Um, we, you know, he, he t- three years ago said, look, I'm going to do something. Cause he was a super genius 19 year old and was suicidal. Mm. Right. And he, he says like, Oh, I was taught quantum mechanics before I learned how to navigate my emotions. Like mm-hmm. what's, what's wrong with this Oops. picture? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <Yep. laughs> and so you know, the, the idea of where, where are our young people going to get all these interstitial pieces of knowledge of how you become a steady, centered, mm. purposeful being that knows their own power, that knows their own capacity. Um, mm. And, and so that's, you know, the heart of this camp, this 20, you know, 30 days is really holding the whole of a human and saying, look, like, we're not going to just do any one element because you are, you're this multifaceted being. Yeah. And so we look at embodiment, we look at sexuality, healthy sexuality, we look at nutrition and cooking, and the backbone is emotional, relational content. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. starts with, you know, actually like, what is it like to be in my body, be in relation to the, this emotional landscape that's here and start to have some skills around, um, Oh, when I have this feeling like this is what it means for me and, and using it all as like, Oh, it's all wise. There's all, there's an intelligence behind everything. It doesn't mean like the impulse is what you want to do, but there's an Mm -hmm. intelligence for why it's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's just a first blush uh introduction to why why we started started that camp i love i love the the bit about the the bit about rites of passage that makes that makes real sense there's there so much of that has gone by the wayside you know i mean we still do some baptisms and marriages and there are certain ceremonies or rituals we mark with but the Maybe I'm thinking from a guy perspective that the tests, you know, where you have to do something hard now, get through something hard, prepare for something hard to take a, a seat in the community, you know, to yeah. uh, to be prepared for that. That's I don't see us doing much of that anymore. It's all it's all easy TV kind of stuff we don't challenge you know the boy scouts are going away and there's there's not a lot of places to go get that challenge now i yeah. have to seek that out as parents well and in natural useful ways not in pedantic irrational ways i feel like the use of punishment and mm. uh dismissal and like the tools that 
it, specifically in parenting and even societally that we use now in order to toughen our kids up are not emotionally intelligent and they actually just cause harm. Um, they don't actually teach the child anything. And right. so a lot of the ways that we try to toughen up our kids, um, they're not rites of passage. They're not these sacred um, trials for a child to go through. And and just last week we recorded an episode called Stop Punishing or Rescuing Your Kids from Everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and because the, the two most common things that I see parents doing that ruins a child's emotional intelligence is you're either punishing emotions or you're rescuing them from them. And yeah. there's a, there's a centered balanced way where you can allow your child to experience pain without stealing it from them without it, yeah. but helping them navigate it instead so that they come yeah. out the other side more whole and in tune with themselves. And you do that in a safe, the safe safety of childhood for 18 years. And lo and behold, you, you have an adult who emerges into society who, like you said, knows their power and capacity. I love that. I I wrote that down. Um, it's, it's so true. And, you know, I think that's what we need somehow is to end up with parents who have that capacity, um, to reinstill that because it's not the norm right now. And so, so many of the young people that show up at camp um, usually have some emotional channels that they don't allow themselves to really feel, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You know, so anger or grief, like -hmm. there's so many of them that are just like shut down because the parent is like, don't cry, like you're fine. Yeah. Or, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, you know, like they got the hammer if they got angry when they were a child. So they're like a fry, you know, they're afraid of their Mm -hmm. own anger. Mm -hmm. Um, And so one of the things that we do in a very intentional way is like, what is it like to see these as um, like the wisdom and the information Mm -hmm. that it carries for you? If you let that out in a healthy way, then the on the other side of movement of anger is clarity, is determination, yeah. right? And I think what you're saying so beautifully is a parent who can sit with a child through the arc of their discomfort will yes. then witness the child coming into their own strength. Like there's an mm-hmm. empowerment yes. of going through that challenge and the parent witnessing it. I yes. went through that and survived it. Yeah. And maybe even stronger. And now I know what it looks like the next time yeah. I see it. Right. You know, yeah. you become, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. You know, you yeah. have to go through it. Totally. You get better at it as you go. Sure. When it's like a million, it's like a million little rites of passage over an yeah. 18 year period instead of like this one big, like when they turn 12, they have to go through this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. And I, you know, yeah. I, I certainly don't prescribe to any, there's no rite of passage where you can just do a ceremony and you're an adult. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's always, I mean, traditionally in a, you know, in a community, a tribal culture where these originated, you're preparing for the 18 years Mm -hmm. and then you're just marking a milestone, marking a transition. Um, but in this, you know, for many people, what we're finding is, they don't have access to elders. They don't have access Mm -hmm. to a lot of different models of what it looks like to be a healthy, regulated human being. And so um, often it's not until they leave home, if the parents aren't able to provide that, it's not until they leave home that they're, you know, can have an opportunity to, oh, wait, there's a different way. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have to just collapse or I don't have to hide or I don't have to like pretend that I don't have these feelings. There's a different way. It's yeah. okay. It's okay to yeah have these thoughts, have these feelings. The kids so and we, I, when they were younger, we got to. Uh, I'm sorry that we got to uh, do some karate training for a few years together, which was a lot like that. You know, we would. There was kind of drudgery. Everybody kind of it's like, oh boy, we got to. You know, it's a hard workout, and and then we'd be glad we got through it when we were done with it. 
And then every so often, you know, you, you prepared for it. And then every so often there was a review where there was some tension and they, they would bring uh, senseis from other, other schools in. And, you know, it was very stern and, you know, a little, make sure you could do it under pressure. You know, make sure, you know, just give you a little bit of pressure and have a little ceremony and then here's your belt, you know, but it was a little uh, need to perform. Okay, we've, you've been learning this stuff for a while now. Well, now let's make sure you can do it while the elephant is charging or whatever, you know, is uh, whatever the challenge is. It was, I think that was a good experience for us. Probably it all was. of us. I hadn't done that when I was a kid, you know. Yeah. But yeah, a bit of a rite of passage. We, um, we dove right in and I love it, but I want to back up for just a minute and <laughs> Catherine, I want to give you, do you prefer cat or Catherine? Cat, please. Okay. Cat. Um, I would love to back up and formally introduce the sleepaway camp that you have created. Um, how many years have you been doing this? So it's, it's still new. It's two years. Okay. We've done two cycles um, okay. and we are also pretty research heavy. So we do a research study before, right after, and then four months after, because, you know, we, we're not interested in doing anything that doesn't have long-term, you know, actually is changing people's lives for the better. Yeah. Okay. And this camp, um, this camp is for um, young adults who remind me, is it 18 mm-hmm. to 27? Yeah. Ages 18 to 27 to come and commune with other young adults and, um, like you said, do the emotional inner work to really get to know themselves and ground in and emotional release. And, you know, I'm summarizing all the bullet points, but I would love for you yeah. to just share um as in depth as you're willing to go, what this, how this camp came to be and, um, what it does to serve, to serve the young adult population, which I think is amazing. I told you on the phone, I was like, man, I wish I knew about this or that it existed when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. (laughs) Yeah. Well, one, one way of talking about how, you know, this particular format came together is, uh, my co-founder and I, Jeff Lieberman, uh, we were looking at stats of suicidality, anxiety, depression in our country. And it's like unbelievable. Like yeah. 9% of high schoolers attempted suicide last year. And like, oh my. and that, that being, wow. that's from the CDC. And that's yeah. um, obviously just the tip of the iceberg in terms of mental distress and just not feeling connected, not feeling supported. Yeah. Um, not, isolation. not feeling, yeah, isolation. And so we wanted something. We also, you know, we've been experimenting with group based, um, kind of group based healing approaches for a while because, uh, you know, one on one therapy is wonderful and it's needed. Uh, but the million, you know, the, the staggering number of people who need support, like outpace the number of one-on-one therapists yeah. by so much that we need models that aren't work, like that aren't hard. And so, you know, being curious about, well, what are the models that are going to be fun that people do in groups mm. that are like, people are yes. drawn to because it's like they're laughing and they're crying together and they're like, oh, this is the aliveness I've been missing. Yes. Like the finally, connection. Like I feel community. I don't feel alone. Yes. I like, yeah. oh, all this shame, all this anger, all this, like, oh, you have that too? Like in your own flavors? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, and so, but we also knew that there's a lot of one week programs out there that can be very cathartic, you know, like you can move big energy in a, in a week. But what we were curious about is if we have a month of community, how does that change somebody's nervous system and body regulation, right? Because over a month, you can't sprint for a month, you know? And so um, it really gives a chance for people to be in doubt and to test things Mm -hmm. and then be like, oh, it's it's actually safe. I can actually bring that. And then like go through multiple cycles of that. Um, And 
you know, because we'll see first waves of that in the first four days and like see people, you know, releasing things they never thought, you know, they were going to tell anybody. And and then that we're four days in, it's like 26 more days, you know, so yeah. the, um, and I think there's just a community permissioning, right? We mm. see this time and time again around any dimension. If somebody stands up and is like, you know what? I realize I've been repressing myself because of my history with the Catholic church around my sexuality and my freedom. And like, actually I want something different for my life. And, you know, just people sharing their specific unique truth, then, you know, other, other people are like, wait, I could cl claim my freedom too. Like I could claim yeah. the thing that I want, that I've thought that everybody just had to hold in and, not not give mm -hmm. themselves um you know so i uh, that is uh that's part of that's part of how it came to be and and we just knew that the work was so in depth that we need a lot of holding especially because of the length so there's about one facilitator almost for every two participants wow and, and each facilitator has their own specialty. And so that makes it very fun to be on a team like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, because there's somebody who just, th they do nothing but attachment work. And there's yeah. somebody who does nothing but cooking and nutrition. There's somebody who does nothing but yoga. And there's somebody who does meditation. And there's somebody who does embodiment and movement and um, creative expression, you know. And so, like, it's a very rich, um, rich community. And we don't, you know, we're, we're just being very human together. I mean, I, you know, in one hand, people are like, I feel like a superhuman, but I feel really human, like more yeah. human than yeah. I did before. Yeah, everybody yeah. gets connected. That's, yeah. and you get a group of people that come in from various backgrounds with various issues. And so then you've got people, you kind of got specialists there, or, you know, who can connect with people in various yeah. ways. Totally. That reminds me of a... Uh, of a ministry, a great banquet ministry, the, a three-day in the religious, in the Christian world, there are a number of three-day uh, retreat kind of things that try to do something similar in, yeah. you know, in a weekend, in a long weekend, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, Curcio for the Catholic Church and and uh, uh, walk to Emmaus for the Methodists. And, but it's not, you know, it's it's grounded with uh, a little bit of preparation and and spiritual. You know, trying to connect people yeah. to the spiritual side of thing. It's not. It'd be interesting to do that with a bunch of highly trained people. You know, like you're talking about, uh, and uh, to address various aspects. Sometimes people mm -hmm. run from it. You know, we we ask people mm -hmm. to come and be dropped off. You know, you have sponsors, and we drop people off because there is a percentage of people when they start to to encounter that kind of thing, they bolt. You know, and if they have their car handy, more would bolt. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like sit, sit still. You know, sit in it for a couple of days. It'll get you know. <laughs> get used to it and uh, and it's hard to get through the discomfort and yeah. then boy the additional I well now then the out upshot of that is then we form small groups and you know for the continuing yeah um, having a group of people to trust and 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 share with and support other people be in service to other people with it would be nice to do that as a 30-day camp that's a real that's a real interesting idea and then study how it works can't wait to read your can't wait to read your research papers. Uh, yeah. That's you know, going to be well, very there's, enlightening. There's some of the data is on the, on the vision page. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, what you said is, is very beautiful. And, you know, one of the biggest things that we test for in the interview process is how comfortable is the person being curious about what they're afraid of? Like how, yeah. how curious can they be about their own resistance? How bad do you want to get this out and look at it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, cause if you have that, that's, that's, that's everything, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't, you know, it, you, somebody can come in and they've done 10 years of therapy already and, you know, they know their internal terrain. That's great. And somebody can come in, they maybe really haven't looked under the hood that much but if they're yeah. if they're curious if they're like oh oh you mean i could look at this yeah and i, I could, know be I could in, look at that yeah yeah um so it's really that it's that it's that curiosity and i agree i mean the probably the hardest step is 
showing up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And sitting still for a while in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what have I and gotten myself into? That's something because we're not learning that in childhood. Like the the you just you said curiosity, and I'm of course back to parenting, um, because curiosity is one of the tools that I teach parents. And I'm like, could you approach this discomfort or this sibling fight or the tantrum? Can you can you approach it with curiosity instead of rejection? Can can mm-hmm. you be with the discomfort and be curious what's happening for my child right now instead of blaming or projecting or judging it? Let's not judge it. Let's not call it anything. Let's ask questions Mm -hmm. and see how that completely changes the con. And, and, and then, and then for these young adults that you're talking to, they're reparenting themselves. Like they're literally having to like have curiosity Mm -hmm. and grace to look at these parts of themselves that have previously been rejected or dismissed and look at it and, bring it to the light and allow it to be seen and then learn to love it or change it or whatever they decide to do with it. Yeah. No, that, that reparenting is, uh, you know, definitely a strong thread through the month. And one of the therapists there is, uh, she specializes in parts work. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, they would even do like the three chairs exercise where they've got like the, the parent and the inner child and the critic, um, as, as one version. And, Um, we had a couple people this year who were like, I don't, I don't know the parent's voice, you know, like they They just don't have anything there. Yeah. Like it would just like, uh, yeah. Or, I mean, there's so, I mean, it's so interesting. I mean, and also, you know, there's some people who had such hard childhoods, they get into the child seat and it's just frozen. Yeah. It's just walled off. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um. Yeah, I, I I feel like part of the heartbreak and the beauty of getting exploring this world is seeing the the reality behind the statistics. Right, there's all these statistics huh. of how common um, sexual abuse is, how common you know verbal wow. and emotional abuse is, and to you know to see you know to see that in 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 more detail and just statistically reflected in the group that we have. Um, I don't know. I, guess, I think where it hits me is, you know, that there's still not like a full acknowledgement, right? Like that yeah. we're all walking around like, oh, you know, just it's, getting our work done. <laughs> it's so yeah. common and so prevalent. Yeah. There's uh, the the ministry I was talking about before. Uh, usually it's guys and girls, you know, so they open up a little more. Um, single sex, sex and listening to some of the talks that uh, that people give in the uh, in the on the especially on the female side, but also the men's side um, about abuse, sexual abuse, and things that all kinds of people go through that you know give you give you challenges later in life. You know, make you want to wall part of your life off. Um, it's it gives you a real understanding. It's amazing how how many of us are walking around wounded. I think probably everybody to some extent or a lot of people. And uh, I think it helps to get it out in the open too, so that uh, you learn to look at other people as potentially, you know, the, the Facebook and stuff now I think is so toxic. Everybody's uh, advertising the top 10 seconds of their day, you know, or week or month and to be keeping your awareness that that's not, really what's going on you know there's people who have been uh seriously abused uh, the younger the worse probably it happens and uh, give people grace give that uh have that understanding going into dealing with other people we don't i don't see that much out in the world anymore parenting reparenting very necessary yeah. but i think yeah. what you're saying is so important right that it's in it's in sharing our hurts that our connectedness comes back yeah. Yes, it is. That's what that's what our commonality is. Yeah. Mm. I always say that in um, real lifelong bonds um, come through the worst moments of your life. The people who traverse and navigate and stick around 
through the worst times, not through the best, but through the worst times of your life. Mm-hmm. Or, or you mm-hmm. go through a hard time together, whether it's a friend or a, or a romantic partner or a sibling or a, a parent. Um, the people who stick by you or go through terrible times with you are the ones that you form the deepest bonds with. And that's not to say like go seeking awful experiences together. Like you want to seek fun and excitement and um, make your life beautiful. Um, But I say that to encourage whoever is listening to just release any release even an inch of resistance that we have to the harder, darker parts of life. Um, I'm not talking about abuse either, because that's a whole other level. Um, well, yeah, one, one example of that is like a tool that we give, you know, there's a nine month integration program after the 30 days. Yeah. Um, and oh, okay. so that's, that's part of, part the of cycle. it. Yeah. yeah. But one of the tools that we offer is just this, what we call a mini. And that's when you have one of those moments where you're just like, Oh, you know, it's so hard and you feel alone and you feel yourself starting to pull in that you text somebody like, Hey, can I have a five, can I have five minutes? Can I have a mini? And -hmm. it's just five minutes where you get on the phone and you just like kind of just let it all out for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the person will ask you a funny question And then they might share for five minutes, just like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. releasing. And for me, I mean, because it's been part of my own practice too. um, It's really been amazing to repattern. Oh, when I start feeling shitty about myself, if my inner Mm -hmm. critic starts coming in or doubt starts coming in, or I'm surprised like with the art falling off the wall, um, (laughs) as I mentioned (laughs) earlier, right? Like, I have anger and disappointment and sadness and yeah. surprise coming up and, uh, you know, to know that, oh, there's connection there too. Like I can just call a friend. Yes. That's the aspect um, of it. The, yeah. the <coughs> excuse me, the interactiveness of it. It makes, it harkens me back to the way uh, we split kids up in a divorce. And so then some, you know, the parents are having to interact in a time frame all the things it's like, Hey, I need a mini. I could use a mini now or very soon and do it while it's there and, and, and present and go both ways. That that would be so valuable. But I, I can relate to that as a parent too, because I feel like there's so many moments, like what you're saying is especially mothers or the primary caregiver can feel alone, right? Like there's that difficult moment and, um, yeah, no backup yeah, I, doing it. Yeah, and yeah, then the dads exactly. who only get it, you know, a couple of days every in a period or something, you know, there's that's not the natural way to. That's not a great way to parent. I don't know how we came up with that system, but um, well, and two people alone yeah. was never the was never the original, right? We lived in communities. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. yeah, we lived in smaller yeah. community, more yeah. connected communities where maybe grandma yeah. and cousins or whoever was around, maybe. Um, you know, there was a tribe, there were women taking care of mom. So mom could take care of baby. So dad could go hunt, you know, um, in a very simplified version of what we think we know about past, you know, past, um, tribes and, and human, human beings. But, um, year the, the nine month integration afterwards, um, when you and I talked, that was something that I, that I, that I wrote down because I think that piece is so important because it's so easy to, to get so excited and I, I'm going into this program and I'm going away for 30 days mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go do all this work and you connect. And I mean, I remember even like a week at summer camp, I was bawling my eyes out leaving because you felt so connected to these people so quickly. I can only imagine if it had been a month long, I wouldn't have left. I would have been like, no, I live here now (laughs) because going back, going back to the life that you needed to get away from 
that you needed to go yeah. and rebuild um, and going back to potentially family members who aren't going to understand. Maybe some of your friends are not going to understand. They didn't share that experience mm-hmm. with you. Um, it's It reminds me of you know, kind of like rehab for, for drugs and alcohol. Like they, Mm -hmm. they help you rebuild your life and rebuild new associations and friendships. Because if you go back to the way the, all of the same people and places that you were in before, you're going to fall back into the same patterns. And so I imagine that for the adults that you're serving, this nine month where they're still in contact with you or with each other, and they're getting Mm -hmm. that support, Um, And I think you even mentioned like you guys have done like meetups in a, like in a city where there's like, maybe there were a lot of people that came to a camp one year. Yeah. Well, this is, so this was an experiment we did uh, between the first year and the second year. The first year we had really people coming from all over the U.S. Yeah. And the second year um, we were curious about how would integration change for people who had a tight knit local community of friends Mm -hmm. that had gone through the program with them and then were integrating and basically rewiring their lives and friendships Mm. together. And so that we had that for this year, about half the camp was from the San Francisco Bay area. Okay. And so there is this cohort, this group now yeah. that you know, they they have this momentum, like they had this incredible experience. A lot of their relationships change, mm-hmm. right? Because that's also very vulnerable to go into a program like this mm-hmm. with pre-existing relationships because, you yes. know, like, you know, as, as, as people unfold into themselves more clearly, things have to get renegotiated. Yeah. Um, you have to and, do something different for things to change. That's the, that's the hard part, right? Yeah. After the fact. Yeah. So absolutely. It's, um, it's extraordinary. And I've been so, not to say that it's all, it's, it's, it's really challenging, but I've been so inspired by some of the stories of people coming back and t- having conversations with their parents. Like a, a young man was having a conversation with a stepfather and he said, I went and I had no agenda. I was just like, I'm just curious about us and our relationship. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he had never had his stepdad respond so openly, like shared more than he'd ever shared before. And then he was like, and I've decided to call him dad because that's how I feel about him now. Now they're connected Gosh. a little better. Yeah. And so I think just the what we're seeing is okay. Like having that steadiness to not be in a defensive place, but be like, Mm -hmm. I can just be curious about this, this human, this parent adult who's in front of me. What's true for you? What are you wanting in this relationship? Yeah. It's amazing. The things, the obvious, simple things were not taught as children, you know, where you, you come up in it and that, that's a new approach to us as we get to an adult. We don't think of it on our yeah. own for some reason and how much value that can have to so many people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm amazed. I, I feel like, it, I mean, it's on par for me with childbirth, right? It's the kind of thing of like, it is such a big deal. It is, it is such, it's life-changing. Yeah. I mean, and then yeah. similarly, the what does it mean to renegotiate the relationship with your parent where you become peers? You know, you're no longer in the same patterns um, of your childhood with your parent. Yeah. Hopefully on both sides, but sometimes you just have to renegotiate your end of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know, I've gone in neutral, curious. Absolutely. If that's that's not getting anywhere, it's like, well, okay, what do I have to do to be healthy or, or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever your goal is going forward. Yeah, beautifully said, right? Because we we can't control the other person ever. Yeah. Um, And so that's, you know, to come with your best alignment and that's, that's all you can do. A lot of times we don't have the tools. And so you go somewhere and get some tools and that can be life changing. Yeah. This is very cool. So you've, so this goes in a year. You do, you do yeah. a month of camp. Mm-hmm. You pre, and then you pre-screen. Nine 
and then nine yep. months of support and integration yeah. and is is it just the minis what else do you do during i mean it's oh, nice yeah. to have no, a group that's, that have a no, that's physical just, access to one another right yeah. right so there's um first we have weekly integration calls with the group okay. okay um and then they go to every other week and then monthly eventually but uh they also are set up to have paired calls with each other just and to reach out to each other, you know, hard moment, like, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 I mean, okay. they're, they're close. And, um, but some of them that are co-located have like whole Sundays that they spend together. And, Absolutely. It's a coffee right, or do, whatever. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, but they do great. the yoga and they do the meditation together. And, mm. um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's unfolding for sure. I can't wait to see that. That's, uh, I, I had a had a friend in uh, law enforcement that you know a lot of a lot of the low level crime probation for juveniles and stuff. There's you know what they need is some counseling, somebody somebody healthier to talk to and 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 pass that information on. You know, but there's just not the funding or or the will to. In, have individual counselors. I wonder if a program like that might be a way for uh, to into what's the word I'm looking for to intervene to to get to kids younger who are having particular problems with them. Get you know get them in a program like that. Yeah, set up I mean, a program that like that. Ours currently is designed for somebody who has a will of their own mm -hmm. to look at challenging things right so yeah. it's interesting but first we thought we thought we'd be interacting with parents like we thought parents would be footing the bill and um mm -hmm. uh, but actually what we're finding is because it's an indi like the intent is for individuation mm -hmm. we're often attracting people who are either they're, they're moving in the world separately from their parents now and if their parents suggest yeah. that they're not likely to go <laughs> yeah 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 um so yeah, it's, it's yeah and it's interesting you know it's really only somebody who has hit a hard spot in their life or have had mm -hmm. significant mm -hmm. challenge already that mm -hmm. would choose to do it. Somebody who's still like just hasn't hit a real bump yet. They're like, I'm going to college. Now I'm getting a job. And I'm going to have a family. You know, like. What's yeah. so hard about life? Life right, isn't hard. Is you know? yeah. yeah. I got What's this. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> so it is. You know, a lot of people, you know, you meet people in these in the programs I've seen and everybody's all beat up and alcoholic and, you know, struggling with stuff. And then you, you run into and people look at that as like, uh, you know, that's that's horrible. Um, what's wrong with you? And then you, you get to talking to them a little bit and it's like, well, they've never really experienced more than a mild breeze in their life. You know, it's, sometimes it's just you haven't been challenged yet. Uh, I, I, I don't know what the word for that is. I'd be curious to know what that is, but you get beat up a little bit and then all of a sudden you start looking for, looking for a better way or looking for help. You know, you don't know how to get yeah. out. You don't have the tools to get out. Well, I think we find we've the, the, I always say that the universe is going to, is going to knock once or twice. And then the universe <laughs> is going to hit you over the head with a two by four. And then the yeah, universe is going to yeah. hit you with a train until you get the message. Yeah. The universe is, yeah. if you believe what I believe, you believe that the universe is always working in your favor. And so that the little hardships come along to nudge you in the right direction for, mm -hmm. for your mm -hmm. best self. And if you're missing those signs or if you're not tuned in or you're not tuned into yourself or you're not, um, you know, you're not taking the feedback from your environment. I hate my job, but you stay there for 20 years. Well, the universe is going to start pummeling mm -hmm. you with, with depression and, you know, terrible raises and like, like leave this job. Like you are so unhappy um, and things like that. And, and if, if I think that people like that sometimes, you know, just don't get the message early enough or they experienced trauma that put layers and layers over their ability to tune into themselves and hear the messages mm -hmm. or see the reflection to their environment because no one ever appropriate 
appropriately acted as a mirror for them. Our first mirrors are our parents, right? Who reflect back to us who we are and what, and what we're doing in the world. And if we're constantly told that we're bad, that we deserve to be punished and yelled at and spanked and, um, put to bed early or without dinner or locked in our bedrooms or whatever for having big feelings when we're three, what are you going to think of yourself when you're 25 or 40 or 70? Yeah. Yeah. Or when you're 30. You know, quit whining, yeah. go to work, shut up, go to work. No, and it can be more benign than that too, right? Sometimes yeah. the hurt is just that the parent didn't see see the nuance or the, the yeah. like, you know, see like the depth of what was happening yes. inside you. And so you started not tracking it either, mm-hmm. yes. right? Mm-hmm. And so in that same way, it's like, well, you, you may just decide, oh, life is meant to be hard and you're just supposed to do what you're supposed to do. That was um, me, as opposed to like. <laughs> so my so when I and therefore probably me to some think degree. Of, <laughs> so when I think that of when I think of my childhood and my like my life and like if you look at it all on paper, you'd be like, you don't have any trauma. Like, what are you talking about? But if you look at, I like the word benign, mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. my. My trauma is I wasn't I wasn't abused. Um, I wasn't you know I wasn't abused in uh, in any facet of the word, um, physically, sexually, etc. Um, I had young parents who were not fully in tune with themselves and their emotions yet until they were older parents and got better at it. But when I was very, very young, my parents were very, very young. And um, big emotions were often dismissed, ignored, or punished. Um, They also often hugged us and kissed us and snuggled us and told us how much we were loved and all of these things. Um, But I remember as I was growing up, I remember feeling unseen Shit. <laughs> well, I'm so, I mean, I'm that's, so. That, no, that's good. If it's getting in touch with something there, that's good. Yeah. I'm so touched by you too. That's I remember. Awful. Yeah. It's a big deal. I knew my parents loved me. But I didn't think that they ever loved me for the me I knew I was. But for the me I was out here. Yeah. Your mom and dad, I'm not supposed to speak too much about my uh, about the pair, but it likens me to being raised in a war zone. You know, your mom and I were not at peace with one another. And yeah. therefore you were chil- you were basically children of a very polite, quiet, sometimes war. I mean, you know, and that's that's exactly yeah. why the, the self regulation and the parent look at yourself first is, is so prevalent in my thinking, because you can't, you know, you can't teach what you don't know or only, only do it yeah. accidentally. And, um, starts, starts at home. Look at yourself. That's why I like your, like your, the idea of your program so much cat is, uh, getting people. It'd be nice if you could just drag everybody off the street and make them right. look at their problems. Oh, I totally right. agree. I get, like, I get trust the free me. You want to be here. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> That's what I say and, in parent uh, coaching too. I just want to like grab parents off the street. I'm like, you need this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> The the, mm-hmm. the 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 parents that are screaming at their kids in Walmart and that kind of thing. It's like, come here, I got you. You're going to disappear for a month. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite there yet in society. No, but I um, I, mean, I just want to acknowledge also just how rare and beautiful it is that you know oh. you guys can actively hold. You know, oh, this was my truth. You know, this was my experience as a child. And that there's a steadiness between you two. Like, there's space for that. That's, and it's, I'm just like, whew, it's It's gorgeous. taken a lot of time and I don't know how much yeah. therapy on either, both of our parts. And We've both been know, to lots that's, of that's therapy. 45 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. It's been 45 years since we started having kids. And uh, 
never give up on yourself, but it, uh, just to emphasize to the parents listening, totally. you know, uh, get inside your own head. If something's not working, if, uh, if your kids are invisible to you, that's not good. You know, that's well, not, that's not ideal. And I love that about parenting too, right? It's not about getting it all perfect, um, yes. but it's about showing up for the repair. Better yes. because, well, uh, what's the thing? Uh, not perfect, but progress. You know, progress uh, over perfection. You know, yeah. Tomorrow. That's the one I'm looking for. Veronique yeah, kept you. saying that to us in her episode. She kept telling you, cause oh, you kept, okay. you kept saying, be. you know, I'm not perfect at it or I'm not good at this or whatever. And she kept being like, it's okay. Progress over perfection. Like you're learning. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. So you've done, you've done two cycles of this. Do you, yeah. I mean, do you, you do the study, you're gathering data, taking notes, mm-hmm. then you publish or are you working on publishing um, or building a business? What's the, where's this yeah. headed for you? This is a great question. I mean, one, one <laughs> version, right. one version that we inig- originally held was like, Hey, the reason we're gathering data is so that we can talk to universities and create a joint program with the university. Um, and what would be okay. super fascinating mm. would yeah. be if 5% of an incoming class did it for four years so that you could actually like have it be the seed and the culture and the whole culture, like watch yes. the whole culture shift. If yeah. like 5% all had, like, I have the steadiness to be with my emotions and I have the steadiness to be with you and yours. Yeah. And like that kind of watch a whole shift because I think just the scale of what we're looking at with loneliness is, is so mind boggling and it's getting worse. Yes, and so it's still getting worse. You know, so so the question in my mind is like, well, you know, what are the, what does it look like to to have a force that's um, on par with social media that's pointing yes. in the other direction, Ooh, right? Challenge, like challenge, yeah. <laughs> um, and so you know, in my in my dreams, you know, we we figure this out enough and get enough partners, and then also have other people just start doing the program too, like Mm -hmm. other groups of facilitators, like doing their version. Um, But, uh, you know, it's just, it's going to be one intervention of many uh, that are needed uh, to, to like all come back to ourselves, to come back. Um, And And what amazing parents these people will be. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Because like, you're not you're just not changing perfect, it for them, you're, you're changing it for the next yeah. generation after yeah. them. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was interesting, you know, we purposefully, we have elders at camp and I bring my boys and my partner is there. And, you know, in the afternoons when they're helping cook dinner or they're doing core exercise, there's some that are assigned to child care. And so through the month, nice. there's always, you know, to two students and it's funny I'd come down and I'll see like somebody sword fighting with my six-year-old or <laughs> oh. they're like building forts and yeah. you know so absolutely I, you know, I think it's it's really you know it's, it's just a taste but it's so important for people to have experiences around children and experiences around yeah. parents and children and uh yeah. I was I did like a dinner Q and a with my partner on parenting okay. and like almost all the students came, you know, it was just like an opt in, like come to the table, yeah. but there okay. were just like rings of people around the table and curiosity, you know, like people, about it. they really want to know, yeah. they want to yeah. know like what does conscious parenting look like? And there were yeah. people who said, you know what? I, I wasn't interested in having kids. And now like, I actually see how it would be part of my growth and development. Yes. Like held in that way, like I, it would help me become a more healed, beautiful human. Mm. Yeah. Um, that gives me hope for the human race that they're around the people around the discussion. Were they, was it all generations? Was it yeah. mostly yeah, little we, kids or who's curious about parent, about oh, learning I mean, more I'll, about parenting? Yeah, it was the students. I mean, our eighteen yeah. to twenty-seven okay, year olds. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. semi grown up. They some of them could be parents. Yeah, yeah. They're in, a lot of them are San Francisco. They're on the the later train. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's that reminds me. Yesterday, I went to a, uh, a park near here, Allerton Park. It's run by the University of Illinois, and and so they have some very learned people running the gift shops, you know, and stuff. And so she was giving a a talk, a uh, history talk of the area, and the the apparently there were initiatives starting back in the twenties to build dams, and they were gonna they were gonna end up flooding this fifteen hundred acre park. Um, mm. Uh, an Army Corps of Engineers, Illinois Government of Waterways, whatever. It was, they were looking for federal funding, and it just went on decades and decades and decades. They, you know, like you were talking about garnering support. You know, uh, need votes in politics. We need we need funding, um, and the way they ended up shutting it all down was. Um, a group of people got together to defend this Allerton Park area, and they started, they got themselves a name, and they did a little promotional promotional campaign, and then they started getting together with groups from all the other areas, and then they, uh, somebody had enough money, they had a, an engineering firm commission a study, they got some data, some scientific data about the downside of how many grave sites they were going to flood and farmers and acreage out of business. It was really a grassroots thing, and they eventually grew it to the point where they killed it. It it took a decade, mm-hmm. you know, but, the, you know, it was a, an interesting parallel story to how do you mm-hmm. how do you get a movement going like that? Yeah. What, it's just like what you're saying, what you're doing, you know, well, get the college involved, get other groups pe- doing it, get, you yeah. know, and it ends up, it's kind of a social evolution. It's, it's uh, the things, whatever, whatever it is we're missing in society where we're not uh, teaching kids to go, you know, we're teaching kids not to go to the school and shoot all the little ones anymore or as much you right know, when, and it's, but it's from pain yeah. yeah like yeah i mean anybody who's causing harm like that they're in so much pain, yeah. so much pain. hurt people hurt right. people yeah kind of thing and so yeah. uh getting something like that going that's uh kudos good 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 job at giving the future world some hope you know we're adapting <laughs> we're losing some kind of we're losing some social stuff but uh people are working on uh, new ways to do it the, the 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 idea of a bunch of bunch of young people standing around listening to parenting stories and ideas that's very hopeful yeah we'll have to start so we'll have to start a chapter around where we're at right yeah well and you because you host or at least the last one was hosted in Colorado. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first yeah. one was on the Big Island, Hawaii, and then we did one up oh, in nice. up in the mountains in Colorado. Yeah. So awesome. So yeah, you had still... people from. You talked about having a group of people from the Bay Area. Did they go to Colorado? Yeah. So it was. It's. It's still from kind of all over the country. Okay. Um, okay. That we're cool. drawing people. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's, People travel for very a month. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I'm. I got you. I got you on my little uh, window list of things to keep an eye on. Here, I'll be checking in <laughs> as the years go by. Right. I can't wait to see mm. what happens. Right. And it's. I think it's. What's notable for me is that it does feel experimental and wild for me too, right? Like it's it's sure. kind of a dream, right? And in, in a sense, and we're just stepping in and walking it and seeing what we learn, um, you know. And there's plenty of learning to go around. You know, I we choose all our facilitate. If a facilitator says like I have it all figured out, mm-hmm. that's not the right person for yeah. our team. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, because like we're all human. Like if yeah. if you're if you're saying you have it all figured out, then you're not being straight. Yeah, need uh, that beginner's mind, new mind <laughs> thing. <going on. laughs> you know, so I think we're all we're all like really listening. Like, what wants to happen here? You know, and um, does it want to continue in the same format, or does it want to evolve into different yeah. formats? Does it? Do we want to move to like really attending to local communities mm. uh, yeah. of young people and having it? just like culturally spread, you know, my co-founder, Jeff Lieberman, who's super into just like, how do we make this fun? How do we make games okay. out of evolving our consciousness? And, <laughs> you know, so he, he's got like card decks and things. He used to do events that were like birthday parties, but like 
a series of social games. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Turn yeah. everything into an experiment. I yeah. can see it next to Monopoly and uh, Pictionary. That's right. You know, right? <laughs> Evolve your consciousness section. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's great. Con- a conscious is parenting he still doing game. That or is it? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, parenting conscious stuff. parenting game, yeah. right? You yeah. can laugh, you cry, and like, right. you, there's questions. Maybe I don't know, like, do, maybe the kids. There's a kids deck and yeah. a parents and deck a parent or something, deck. and like parents draw and the the kids yeah. draw. It'd be very. The kid has to like stuff, read a scenario. The play by themselves. And the parent has yeah. to like stuff the kids has play. to like yeah. give their answer of how they would handle that scenario. And then they like if they oh, if the boy. kid doesn't approve the the way that the parent deals with it, they have to draw like some kind of card or <laughs> they lose points. Oh yeah. That'd be fun. Really? That'd be fun. I or can they discuss see that. it. Yeah. That even if it just started in like churches and other so you know, at social groups where you could kind of uh, encourage youth groups of various kinds, that would be great or or well, yeah, all, why, kind of, all, all kinds you of know, gatherings. One of the things that I do here in Oregon is I have a women's, a mother's group. Um, mm. okay. So we meet monthly and have been doing that for four years. But it, I started it during COVID because I was just like, I need, you know, everybody was yeah. isolated. And I was just like, I need yeah. women together, yeah. like yeah. our bodies together, like yeah. on the earth. Yes. Um, and it's been, it's been amazing to... I didn't realize what a gift it would be to me because these yeah. moms are the mothers of the kids in my classes. And so like now yeah. when I'm at play dates, there's all these mothers that I've had profound explorations with, Yeah, you know, and so I'm not stuck at the playground like, well, I'm cooking pizza tonight, right. you know, like I can, the actually, you know, is... and that can be part of it, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like I feel permissioned in like the range of what's going on for me. A little um, vulnerability goes a yeah. long way towards yeah. uh, uh, changing the conversation from weather and, and small what's for dinner. Well, and feeling yeah. truly connected so that when you do, go, you know, everyone's taking their kid to the park, you're not, it's, it's real connected time. You know, when you get to have those conversations with other adults, um, cause as primary caregivers, I'm not a mom yet, but I'm a nanny and, been stuck at home with an infant for all hours of the day, many days a week and getting out of the house is precious and having an adult conversation (laughs) is precious. And to take those adult conversations from surface to, to depth and like feeling like truly renewed or rejuvenated to, you know, when you leave the park and go back home, it can really feed your soul. Um, Get to explore. Yeah. You have to have you have to walk around to when you go to the park with the kids. You have to walk around, and pass out little little cards or uh, a flyer, you know, and say, "Hey, I've been looking at you across the park for six weeks now, you know." Or we've been taught, you know, let's do, let's get together next Saturday afternoon, you know. <laughs> well, pick a right. time. I, Child I usually... care provided the first couple of times. Right? No, it's but I have met people in funny ways. So for the first camp yeah. I was at an airport just like four weeks before camp. And I heard this young man just going on and on about intentional living communities and just like, you know, just really fiery. And I, for him, I was like, check out this website. Tell me, let me know, email me if you're interested. And he came to camp. He's amazing. That's Um, awesome. Yeah. I love it. I've never heard of an intentional living community before. That sounds like a great idea. (laughs) There's so That'll much be, going on. I don't know. I'm you've so, got a lot I'm of so hours of, of googling ahead of it, <laughs> right? <laughs> he always has things to research after these episodes. He's like, "Wait, what? What is that?" Well, and that brings up a thing you touched on before about the importance of changing your environment a little bit, changing your community. If you're, you know, going back mm-hmm. to your family, you can't, you can't do so much. You go, you go through this and you can't necessarily change your family, change others. Um, but you could certainly add another group to it, you know, so that you've got a healthy, like-minded group to a support group or what, you know, just, just people um, yeah, to right. talk to and have minis with. And, and uh, that would, 
that would go a long way towards helping if you were in a crummy situation with your family. Yeah, I mean, I think part of this transition from loneliness and isolation to, you know, what it means to create more layers of connectedness, you know, is, you know, also with like when I'm at home, if my spouse is the only person that I bring my issues with, like that's going to get heavy, right? Mm -hmm. So just having a women's group or other friends, you know, adds layers of support. Yeah. Yeah. That's something yeah, my husband and I have definitely navigated as, I guess, we're still newlyweds. Um, it'll be a year in October. So definitely still newlyweds. And we, you know, we've, we lived together for two years before we got married. So we've lived together for three years now. And so we've been navigating that, you know, that we can't bring everything to each other. There's a, yep. there's a balance of relying. You can't re- I saw a statistic once and that it's like you, you should, you, you and your partner should be able to get about 80% of your emotional needs met through one another. And the other 20% mm-hmm. you should be, you should have your community. You should have friends and family and, um, you know, other people who, And other perspectives, right? Because if if you and your partner just live in this bubble of each other's perspective, that can get very codependent very fast too. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's definitely something that's like up for me right now um, and is constantly being like navigated through is, you know, is this, not only is this something I, I should or could bring to him, but is he the right person to bring this to? And is this the right time? to bring it to him. Timing is so There's important. There's like so many little, yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. Imagine the, the pioneer days where it was you and a, and a spouse and uh, maybe a couple of kids and a couple of horses, you know, and nothing else for five or 10 miles. Right? You know, yeah. that was, uh, they talk about the pioneer spirit that may not have been the, the optimal parenting situation. <laughs> Start writing some pretty wild fiction, I think. Right? That's right. right? All, our... <laughs> All right. Kat, is there anything? Play the role. Is there anything, Kat, that we have not touched on that you want to share? Mm. I feel pretty complete. Uh, we're, we are gearing up for. This winter, we'll do a series of weekend events called Intermediate Friendship. Awesome. Um, oh, yeah. We're working so on that, the format. That's nice. Twisting and yeah, turning. I like that. Yeah. So it's, it's just a way for us to go where our alumni are and where they want to um, depth create depth in their community. Yeah. Um, so then we do weekend events that way around the country. So we're, we're wow. planning those. I love it. And where can people, if people want to learn more about those events or next year's big month-long event, where can they find you? The place to go is sleepawake.camp. Awesome. Sleepawake.camp. And we'll have all those things linked in the show notes as well as your bio and and everything where people can find you all over the place. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. It was a pleasure to meet both of you. Yeah, you too. You too. Best of luck. Hope you you get them. Hope you get this uh, this out there. The world could really use it. Mm, Yeah. Positive note. I love it. I appreciate the work that you're doing. I think it's amazing. Well, it's all intertwined. May the, yeah. may the parents continue to generate more and more healed and confident children. Um, and then may we meet them fully as they transition to adults. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Take all care, right. you both. Take care. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, did you learn anything new or have you heard all of this before? Do you agree with us, disagree with us, have a question? We want to see you in our inbox or via the Patreon page in the show notes. Tap on either link to send us your feedback, share your own parenting story, or support our mission of providing a connected community for all parents. 
And don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you loved this episode, click on that little star and give us five of them so we can get visible to other parents who are looking for us. This is your weekly reminder. Parents, you already have everything you need inside of you. You are a strong, loving, capable parent. And here, you are never alone. I'll see you next week.